Good evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the July 9th, 2020 meeting of the Dyer Town Council. Due to the unique nature of these meetings, the Town of Dyer will only accept public comments submitted electronically. If you have a question or a comment about the, an item on the agenda, please email that question or comment to publiccomments at thetownofdyer.com. We will ensure that all submissions are shared with the elected and appointed officials of the respective board. The submission will also be entered into the minutes of the respective meeting. Please list your name and address in your email for the meeting record. Please keep your comments civil and constructive to the policy issues on the agenda. I would like to call this meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a consent agenda before you that includes the minutes of the June 11th, 2020 Town Council meeting, the minutes of the June 25th, 2020 Town Council meeting, minutes of the June 25th, 2020 executive session, and claims totaling $2,180,220.02. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I'll make that motion. You have a second? I'll second the motion. Roll call, please. Bob? Aye. Alan? Aye. Derek? Aye. Steve? Uh, I got a question. Mary, I'm sorry. Tony. You have a question? Well, yeah, I wasn't here for the one. You got two sets of minutes within one agenda. You can you can vote in favor of abstaining on those minutes. I vote in favor of abstaining on the minutes from June 11th and vote in favor of the rest of the agenda. The rest of the agenda, yes. Okay, so the minutes should say that uh, Councilman Kramer was absent for the June 11th meeting. Well, for the record, I was on the phone with the council of the meeting. Right. Prior to right. Murder. Right. Okay, would you like to amend your motion? No, it, the motion doesn't have to be amended. Okay. It's his vote simply that he's approving the consent agenda, but abstaining as it relates to the minutes okay. of June 11th. Gotcha. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Roll call, please. Um, Aye. Eric. Aye. Alan. Aye. 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 In announcements, July 29th, the comprehensive plan review with steering committee will take place. And second, second town council RDC meeting, if necessary, will be on Wednesday, July 29th, following the comprehensive plan review. Any other announcements? <laughs> yes, on July 23rd, they're having a police appreciation, which is out of contrition. So hopefully, Dyer could show a good showing. Okay. And yeah. All the police and all the town here that town, public town. All right, thank you. On reports from the town council. I have nothing Bob? at this time. Alan? I have nothing tonight. Eric? Uh, just a couple of announcements. Tuesday, we had our uh, first advisory board on disabilities that we uh, formed last year. The meeting went very well. I'd like to thank Christine Ward, Alicia Myers, April Moran, Mark DeRue, and Barbara Butcher for participating. Um, I really think that there's going to be a lot of uh, good to come out of that committee for the town of Dyer. Also, on the same night, we had our first Dyer Community Market. Went off very well, approximately uh, 500 people uh, came, ate, purchased items, listened to music, and had a good time. I'd like to thank uh, the Parks Department, Mike O'Shea, Andrea Dalage, uh, Barb Jankowski, and also our two, two uh, citizen volunteers, Beth Vandergrind and Melissa Verberg, for the countless hours of work that they put into making that event a success. Uh, just a couple issues. One is uh, about three meetings ago, the town council approved to uh, put an investment into cleaning up Pheasant Hills Pond. Yes. And uh, we have seen nothing. If we're looking for it, we also, the second part of that was that to ask the other boards and commissions to partner with us. I, I've got a, I, I met with the storm board after that meeting and they gave me some advice 
and I'm preparing a report for you, you'll have that. Thank you. Okay, I, it's, not, it's not lost, okay? It's good, it's a more than what you anticipated if you wanna do it a certain way. But you'll have that report. I'll get it ready for you at the next meeting. Appreciate it. And the second item was, I was in the park on a Saturday, and there were people from out of town with assault rifles in our park. I inquired about if we had an ordinance or a code against it, and I was told, no, we don't, but uh, we should probably consider one. There's no need to have any type of uh, weapons like that in our parks for any reason. Uh, if they want to exercise their rights, I'm all for it. I'm a Second Amendment uh, supporter too, but they should do it in the proper way and on the streets. I'm, I'm happy to say we had a good presence of our police department who did a magnificent and professional job. Uh, but the concerns from uh, residents, parents, and kids in the park that day were coming up to me and asking why we allow uh, any type of weapon, such as assault weapons or anything else, in our parks, uh, and especially from people from out of town. So those were the issues, and at some point I'd encourage and ask the council in the parks to consider making an ordinance and or a code, whatever needs to be done, to ensure, I know I was at the community market with a great event. Kudos to everyone who helped out there. Did a magnificent job, but I could not envision with all the little kids and the families and parents there why we would allow anyone to carry assault rifles and other weapons through there. So those were the concerns brought to me by uh, a lot of residents. So I promised them I'd bring it up for the council. So at some point, maybe I'll bring it up again at the study session. But those were the major issues. But, uh, uh, thank you again to the police and fire department that were out there. Community market, uh, parks department did a great job, so thank you. Is that all? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank the police department and all the surrounding police departments for quick action last Sunday night. We had a little incident on our, our not a little incident, we had an incident on our end of town the other day and the residents thoroughly appreciated all the communication that was being done and caring for uh, the residents in that part of town. Also, there will be a Dyer and Blue meeting on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday on the 7th, uh, on July 14th at 2.30 in the afternoon. We invite everybody to come. As you can see, there's a lot of beautification going on around town and thanks to that group. Uh, Clerk Treasurer, do we have any announcements? Uh, yes, our auto debit, we've increased so far, not done yet, 475. Wow. So that's good. We're still putting them into the system. We got a lot. We're putting another letter into the newsletter. Good. So. And I think the beauty of that is, is that you're not being penalized with. You're not paying in the, right, the right. penalty for doing it. And right. I, I can't blame them. Who would want to be paying a service just to use their sure. credit card? Anything else? Nothing else. Town manager? I have nothing other than what's here. Boards and commissions. Frank? Um, essentially on the uh, sanitary side, we, uh, at our last meeting, we awarded the bids for our uh, sanitary line repair um, and uh, lining project. Um, and as mentioned then, this represents uh, the, all the structural fives or worst structural pipes in the town, at least at this time. Uh, came in at you know roughly half of what the estimate was, which was good. Yeah. A lot of competition out there. Um, right now, going through uh, receiving paperwork from the uh, contractors, and hopefully here in the next uh, upcoming weeks, we'll get the notice to proceed. And then, uh, of course, have the uh, pre-con meetings and, and continue forward with that work. Um, so we're looking forward to that. On the phosphorus removal, which we discussed at the prior meeting, that's currently uh, well into design. So uh, working to get that. Uh, design completed and refined with uh, Jeff and his staff. Um, and in the upcoming months, uh, we'll go to IDEM for permit and, uh, and then ultimately on to bidding and construction hopefully here um, to get that project moving and going. Uh, comprehensive flow monitoring, uh, NICE is still waiting. That's of course uh, all the monitoring we've done throughout town. We had all the rain events that we needed for that. Um, NICE is awaiting some uh, reports and some data sets from the company that did the flow monitoring so that they can go in and take their first step of this, which is developing that performance map of our collection systems. So that's well underway as well. Um, at the last meeting, we um, discussed uh, alternatives to the above ground storage tank um, to provide uh, risk mitigation, redundancy, resiliency in our uh, distribution system. And uh, after extensive discussion, 
um, it was uh, decided to take the approach to move forward with interconnections with adjacent communities, Munster, Shareville, as well as having, uh, installing a redundant uh, distribution okay. line from the booster station into our distribution system itself. So uh, that package is what we're pursuing right now. Um, the staff and engineer are looking at um, kind of fleshing out the details of what that's going to involve. We've got some approximations on cost, but again, that's in development um, and probably can't happen soon enough because over, which uh, you all know here on uh, July uh, 3rd, we ended up having a break on that very supply main that concerned us. That's yep. our third break in the last three years and our second break in the last few months um, at that line. So um, that work, uh, again, everybody worked, uh, I think, effectively uh, to get that uh, break prepared. Um, it was a situation where we had a very hot day, high usage on a holiday um, with fireworks. So it was certainly, um, you know, I always talk about the black swan events, and that was one where <laughs> Uh, it had us concerned, yeah. but you know, everybody worked effectively. Um, it, it appears to be related to pipe corrosion, which has been an issue along that line. Um, so that's being pursued as part of um, you know, resiliency and risk mitigation. Our system is looking at what's necessary to reinforce or improve the reliability of, of the existing line. Um, so and I think you guys seen some images and some photos of, of the repair and of the corrosion. Yes. So, um, but again, that just uh, underlies and validates uh, our need to have these other alternative uh, means, operational means in place. So, um, so we're working, uh, everybody is working uh, very diligently to resolve those issues and, of course, get our alternatives in place. So. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Parks. Here uh, uh, for the Park Board side. Um, at our last meeting, the park board uh, awarded the uh, Central Park ball field project. Um, at our last meeting, the park board awarded uh, Dyer Junction with our Central Park project coming up. Uh, that project uh, entails uh, the fourth ball field being built, walking paths, and two uh, ponds. Uh, and then, uh, so that should be getting started pretty soon. Planning to finish out by the, uh, October for that. Um, and then um, uh, we're in the process of uh, working with CSK Architects and the Architects of Fire Division on uh, putting together a, uh, a building protection and rescue uh, facility over at that, at that north end as well. Um, uh, and we'll be talking about that at our next uh, park board meeting. Um, and then um, just to uh, echo down what Eric has said, um, the park will look great. Community as a whole did, uh, did well. Um, and it looks like we have 38 measures overall. Our next event is the 21st of, uh, of July. And uh, right now we actually have 39. So um, uh, it went well. Uh, good crowd, especially the four o'clock crowd. Really good, much better than I expected. So that worked out. Good. Thank you. Chief? Thank you. Uh, for June, we had 900 incidents. 10 arrests, 36 accidents, 98 citations, 156 warnings, with 42 ordinance violations. The staffing update, we are currently at the 29 sworn officers with the approval being at 32. The process has started in about midway to hire the three for the vacant positions. And we're anticipating in August that the industry will be able to swear in three new officers bring us up to a full staff of 32. Good. Our canine unit, uh, we have a date for schooling. It's August 24th, five-week class. At the graduation of that class, so there'll be a certified patrol dog, so we'll have one assigned to each of the, uh, one in the day turn and one in the night turn, so they each have access to it. Uh, for special events, excuse me, um, we have not canceled National Night Out yet, but we are working very closely with the uh, national organization and the surrounding towns to kind of monitor what the norm is going to be as we approach the date. I uh, should have an announcement here shortly from our uh, liaison, Corporal Kissinger and Corporal Patrick. That's all I have unless there's any questions. Dave, what night was National Night Out supposed to be? Uh, first Tuesday of August. Yeah, I couldn't remember the date. 
I can tell you it's probably not going to be a, a similar style event if, if it's held at that date. It'll be something a little more socially distanced and, and less or zero food vendors. Yeah, the fourth. Yeah, August fourth. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jeff. Uh, one thing I want to add um, for the uh, speed bump minute order, uh, it will be uh, definitively delivered by the end of August. Okay. And then I'll uh, just try to get the bell from the time shortly. So I'll add that check on the board. That's it? That's it. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have resolution 2020 yeah. 10. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I forgot. Neil, oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Neil. Northgate <laughs> <laughs> uh, project proceeding. The 2020 1 Osage and Laurel project that we were awarded in um, April. We are still waiting on in-dot contracts. Tom and I did get an email probably about a week and a half ago that they're proceeding now that they're moving into their next fiscal year. So we we don't have those by the end of July, and that, that's a project that's scheduled to go through this year and into next year with, um, I believe, $689,000 of funding through it. Now. It's not going to be one where they started this year and never get it done until next year? We well, talked with the contractor and said, you understand it's a 520-day schedule. Anything you open up, we want to have service okay. by the end of the year. We don't want to move all the utilities catch everything and leave it over the winter, you know, maybe right. not maintain it, but we'd rather have them do a part of the project completely than all of the project incomplete. So yeah, I've already talked to Brett Furman over there about okay. construction and they agree with that point. Uh, the last one is unfortunately the CCMG 2020-2 application is on hold um, as a my understanding it's the, the reduction in the yeah. tax this year. They're going to revisit that in late August, early September, so they're making additional uh, opportunities to apply for that. But in terms of what we looked at for those 2020-2 projects, we, we put those on hold for right now because it, it doesn't make sense to prepare an application until we know they're going to be ready to go. But um, even if that is done in September, by the time they award it in November, sure. possibly December, that would be a 2021 project. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Any questions? Yep. Neil, which uh, projects will be put on hold? Uh, those were in the 2020-2 resurfacing. I, I don't have that list with me, but I, I believe it was uh, 215 for Ocos and uh, a couple projects on the, the areas off of Castlewood. Right. I think Kelly Place and yeah. there, King. Um, maybe King not the right one, but there, there were several that was on that list that Tom prepared for you in the last week. We're okay. based on this information. We're going to meet probably next week. You'll see later in the agenda uh, an extension of prices from Austin Kelly, which is we just literally got today. We're going to be able to figure out exactly how much money we've got and what we're going to be able to do. We're going to come back to you with a revised list that will take into account what we call the local road resurfacing that I talked about a month or six weeks ago, whenever that was. I don't see us changing the 2022 CCMG things. We'll keep that in the hopper for them because they're bigger projects. What we will take a look at is what else we'll be able to do given the reduction in prices and the fact that we don't have to have uh, a cash for the CCMG stuff done. So when we see them, we may expand in some other things. I'm not going to do, I have a petition from a subdivision to repave a, a, a Pazer 5 street because there's a couple of potholes and bad sections. What we're looking at is to go into parts of town where we've got situations like that, where there's a good street, but a bad area. And we'll get in and we'll work with Walsh and Kelly because we're now able to do that because we're out, you know, it's, it used to be it's either or, the whole thing or nothing. But I think now we're getting to that point where we can squeeze some of those things and we'll hopefully have a, a better report for you or a full report with uh, an, being able to make an award at the next meeting. So that's kind of where we're at. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Ordinance and resolutions. Resolution 2020-10, declaratory resolution, temporary loan. We're not going to do anything. You don't need to take any action. The okay. reason I put this on there was, if you recall, the last time I said we were going to follow up. Right. And this allows us to kind of track it. Bill's advices, 
We just leave the declaratory resolution out there. If we need it, we can activate it and deal with it. But, but we're fortunate enough, we got our settlement, which is another item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to make any temporary loans, so we're in good shape. I'm pleased with that. Thank you. Okay? Yes, it's good news. Yeah. In old business, we have a status, uh, budget status and oral report. Well, basically, you got the tax settlement memo that's dated July the 9th. Um, no, I'm sorry. It, there's a property tax settlement, which is this sheet of paper here. Yep. Shows you the details of what the tax settlement that the clerk's office received uh, towards the end of June for the July, June, July settlement. It's a little bit less than we normally get, which is what we anticipated. But we are uh, able to make all of our uh, payments, all of our payments, and, and our cash reserves are in pretty good shape. We're in the midst right now, of starting probably next week and going for the week after, meeting with departments to go through their first six months and then their last, getting ready for the 2020 budget, which is an 18-month process. So we're going to take a look at what the last six months is going to look like, both on the revenue side and expenditure side, see what, see what has come up uh, unexpectedly that is non-COVID related because the COVID related, we're able to uh, ask for reimbursements. So we're also working on that, but uh, we're looking at staffing and a number of other things. So we'll have some, we're gonna keep moving on this so as we get into the budget stuff, we have some more. All right, and the COVID, better. that runs all the way to December when we can- Yes, right now it runs through to December but it's any expenses we've made, but it does not, you have to remember the most, to us, to, at least in my opinion, the most important thing it doesn't cover is lost revenue. Yeah. And I use the perfect example of the parks department, which basically shut down right. and being able to show the loss in things like gas tax revenue, which relates to MBH. You can't recover that money under a reimbursement. So that's a, that's a problem we're going to have. And some of our, some, uh, the, the low it, which is the income tax is going to lag in the next year. We're waiting for the, we're going to get an estimate from the state as to what they anticipate. But I figure it's going to be probably in the neighborhood of 20% of local option income tax, which has an impact when it deals with public safety. We've got two local option. One is the seated fund, yep. which is discretionary kind of funding, but the, the, the public safety we do use for police and fire, it's going to have an impact. And all these things ultimately ripple back to, the general fund, and it's the it's the it's the fund with the largest number of expenses and the least flexibility in revenue, and when we lose those things, it hurts, and it's the same thing we're looking at the utility funds and what they're able to help share, and make their payments to the general fund for services provided, right. and it's all it's all a big jigsaw puzzle. When do we expect anything from Baker Chili about uh, utilities? Where they. I've, it's been a week or two since I've talked to them. They were asking us, and we're putting together the 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 major capital and like placeholders essentially. Right. And now that we've gotten the the storage tank issue resolved, uh, that piece has been done. So we look at that, and then we're putting everything else together. But they're look they're finishing up their stuff, and uh, they're still working remotely. The last time I talked to them, which has been difficult, yeah. but. Um, we'll see how it works out, but I'll get you something. We'll have something hopefully by August in, in August. Okay, thank you. The mid-year financial position? It's, I think it's that, kind of all wrapped up to yeah. the same thing. And the good news with Walsh and Kelly. Yeah, you can see they've, they've uh, extended their prices. So what I'd like the council to do is to do this, and then we'll have the Redevelopment Commission do the same things if we have any tip streets that we're going to be able to to do some work on. So we'll just carry it over to the redevelopment commission also. Right. Is the way to do it. So what you do is make a motion that you accept Walsh and Kelly's um, offer to extend the uh, 2018 uh, annual material services bid for the 2020 uh, construction season. So I have a motion to approve the Walsh and Kelly extending the 2018 material pricing. A so motion. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? <laughs> Roll call, please. Bob? Aye. Eric? Aye. Alan? Aye. Steve? Aye. Aye. 
and the vote is five to zero. We're all in favor of it. Do we have any citizen input, Frank? We have not received any comments at public comments at the town of Dar org. Okay. Anything from the audience? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address. My name is Rich Sobel, and I live at 18 Jacobs Court. Okay, can they'll give you a microphone, Rich. I live at 18 Jacobs Court. I was just wondering, does anybody know about the telephone service? Is there any information out there? From the other day you're talking about, Rich? Yes. Yes. Thank you, well, best to understand that there was some AT&T fiber that was struck on the highway there. And it, the way it works with a, obviously AT&T services were affected, but it just so happens that a lot of other carriers, including Verizon, utilize AT&T circuits. Um, so any of those other carriers were also affected. So it created basically issues with cellular communications, mobile communications, as well as a number of other carriers. Well, I have my mobile service, which is good, but my landline was out. As far as it's it's still out? Yes. Okay, and it's with AT&T? Yes. And you have a service ticket with them? Well, I called them, and they, uh, I called them, and uh, you've got to go through all the voice process. They're telling me that it's not going to be up until... Supposedly, June 12th at 7 p.m. Okay. Yeah, as far as those landlines, um, you know, I'm not aware of that. All of our facilities are functioning, you know, um, but that's uh, that's news to me in terms of what that outage looks like. But I mean, I certainly can inquire and find out what um, what the extent of that is and if that timing is accurate or not. So. You know, when you're dealing with those people, it's, it's hard to just deal with. Yeah. I don't think their their information is is as accurate as they say it is. Well, if you provide me with your contact information, Rich, then I can um, you know contact the people I know, um, and and hopefully we can get you a better answer than that. So I got another question uh, on this county project on this bridge project. Mm -hmm. does, the, does the county give the town updates? Is is that they're on schedule? They're at 25 percent completion things are going along smooth does anybody get that information it, yes we get periodic reports <laughs> and brian lane and others go out there on a fairly regular basis i think people from neil's office go out there i know that they had an incident where one of the workers tested positive for the virus so they had to go into that mode and that's why another work had been done earlier in the week so uh there was a problem earlier with uh, locating an underground utility. It was not where it was supposed to be. That delayed a whole bunch of things by a day or so, and that just rippled along. But they're moving along. They're on schedule. We haven't been, we haven't been told that they're gonna be behind by a month or so. So they're moving along. It's just a slow process, Rich, is the problem. They've had problems with, with the uh, part of the bridge they're driving on is in worse condition than they thought so they had to do some temporary shoring up and that delayed you know it kind of delayed any forward prog progress and stuff like that so that's what's going on with it the sooner the better I like that, the sooner the better. well they could have gotten it done <laughs> half the time if we'd have closed the bridge but that really wasn't practical that's why main street got done so quick because you had a, you had a detour available from both sides of it you got done in half the time. Yeah. Mr. Soga, we appreciate your uh, frequent updates on Facebook as to the progress of that construction <laughs> also. <laughs> I go to every uh, Saturday, and I kind of take a walk over there and see what's going on. You know, um, what's that guy's name? Uh, Mr. Rich, I wonder too about that big heavy piece of equipment that's sitting at the bottom of the creek right now. 
Have you seen that? Okay, that's what I'm, I'm glad you're here. Yes. <laughs> Hasn't rained for two weeks. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Public works never leaves you, does it, Richie? Even though you retired out of there. <laughs> I know. Yep, and that's good. That's right. We appreciate that. Thank you for your input. Mary, I have uh, one yes. other thing. Um, I have a K9 donation of $25, if the council could accept that. Okay. Motion to accept. Second. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Bob? Roll call. Bob? Aye. Eric? Aye. Helen? Aye. Chief? Aye. Mary? Aye. Vote is 5 to nothing to accept the donation. Yeah. Uh, that is the end of our meeting, so I will accept a motion for adjournment. I have one question, yes. there any and all. Yes. There's not a representative from the fire department here. I noticed on their monthly report, their monthly report, there's a line that says, had crews on standby for a local rally at Pheasant Hills Park. Would that have been EMTs on standby, or was that fire department on standby for a rally? Do you know, Chief? I can answer the most unofficial way that, that Allow me to. Um, I know that the duty crew was on duty that day, and that they also back filled the duty crew with two additional members so that they could be dedicated to more detail, but would take away from the services for the rest of the town. It's uh, mainly staffing for medics. Okay. Any other questions? I have one uh, comment. I saw some pictures on social media that I went out to the parks, uh, especially Pheasant Hills and Northgate the Sunday after the 4th of July, and they were a disaster. There's liquor bottles, fireworks everywhere. Do we have an ordinance against fireworks use in the park by citizens? There's an ordinance against fireworks use anywhere. Didn't work out very well for the last month or so. <laughs> I mean, that'll be, right. but that's the problem. Right. I mean, yes. yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. we had a limited we have a, maintenance facility in the park. Yeah. And all that. Yes. Same issue with, you know, it, you it's a, catch them. yeah, right. So if you don't catch them, you go in and clean it up on Monday in this particular case. Right. I mean, I have a right to yeah. ignite fireworks. Yeah. I will say that was one of the most amazing 4th of July's I've ever seen in Dyer. The citizens really uh, did well for themselves. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they did it up north too. I'll they tell sure you. did. It sounded like a war zone for till 2 o'clock in the morning most of the time. It's crazy. Any other questions? Roll call, please, for adjournment. Bob? Aye. Eric? Aye. Alan? Aye. Steve? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, we have the Redevelopment Commission meeting. And again, I will read the same statement. Due to the unique nature of the meetings, the town of Dyer will, will only accept public comments submitted electronically. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please email that question or comment to public comments at townofdyer.com. We will ensure that all submissions are shared with the elected and appointed officials of the respective board. The submission will also be entered into the minutes of the respective meeting. Please list your name and address in your email for the meeting record. Please keep your comments civil and constructive to the policy issues on the agenda. With that, we will begin the Redevelopment Commission meeting. Uh, you have a consent agenda before you. You have the minutes of the June 11th, 2020 Redevelopment Commission meeting. And Steve, we want to note that you were remotely. Yeah, I was going to abstain well, okay. because I was remotely on uh, June 11th. Right, right. The minutes from the June 25th, 2020 Redevelopment Commission meeting and claims totaling $2,016,651.88. Do you have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the consent agenda as presented. We have a second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Roll call. Bob? Aye. Eric? Aye. Alan? Aye. Steve? Uh, yes, except for the minutes of June 11, 2020. I will abstain from that. Mary? Aye. On reports, attorney's report? I have nothing to report. Town manager report? Same. Status of fire station construction, three week schedule. It's just an FYI, the where, where things are moving along, just to kind of keep you in the loop. We have uh, progress meetings every two weeks, and things are going. It took, form, took the forms off of the foundations, and now it's 
moving right. along to start getting plumbing work, you know, sketched in and that type of stuff. So it's moving along pretty well. Is it helping that the road is closed? No, because they're not doing anything in the okay. road. The trucks just go in and out. Road will be open next week. So. Okay. Uh, Next, we have the request to allocate TIF funding for furnishings and fixtures. I was hoping to have, uh, well, here's what I'm working on. We're, we're st as we, with the construction, I've got the construction money set aside. I will bring to you at the next meeting or an upcoming meeting a report on what we anticipate. So I want to have a, a, like a lot, an allocation. So I, you know, basically we, we got a, like the, an extractor. We got a lot of things we have to buy for the station as we okay. build it. And I want to have a set aside a part of a budget for that that whole thing so I'll, I didn't get that done I was out sick in the holiday and as you can tell from the agenda it's a little on the spare side so but I'll have that for you I just want to let you know what we're doing okay and the update on the Central Park construction. well I think Michael Michael did a nice job uh, of what we just bid between those two projects we've got a lot going on they're going to start the water main and the sanitary sewer coming from Calumet to the park which is a big park part of that park project uh, Brian was meeting with the public works guys this morning. We're going to go into those four houses to determine all their septics are coming out of the rear, Yes. but they'll have a sanitary source. So we're going to see what the situation is and come back with you with some options, but they technically have to hook up if, if it's 300 feet. Right. So, um, uh, they'll abandon their, their, their sewer line. We'll come up with some, how you want to handle, give you some options on that. But that's the good news is that, um, Rex Construction, which is doing the underground at the fire station, has also got that job. They're going to get moving on on everything uh, here pretty soon, so that's moving along. We've got Michael be meeting with the park board next week to talk about the concession stand, and uh, we've got some 3D renderings. We, we the architect is done. I like the renderings. The layout, I'm checking those out today, and stuff like that. So that's moving along. And the prices, the bids keep coming in the way they are. We're going to be in great shape. We're going to be able to keep moving these projects along. I mean, this the the uh, the ball field thing was pretty much just a little over half of our estimate. Wow. So that is good news. That literally almost puts another project. It slides in the baseball lights within within another project, that's, which is really helpful. Yeah. Uh, the baseball, the lights probably won't get done till over the winter or the spring, but it does give us flexibility to actually move it up in terms of where my, my my budget plan was and stuff like that so we're, I, i'm real pleased with the way things are going good so, news okay tom i was out at uh, patriot park in michigan city for a softball tournament this past weekend yeah. and there was, they had a field of solar panels that they used to for all the lighting all the electricity needs at that park I just want to keep it on the keep it on the <clears> radar with this i think we're very well set up not a lot of trees to block out sunlight um that we could probably try to, we try to take advantage of some of this new technology to yeah I, it's been a year or two since i've been there so i don't i haven't seen this that must be relatively new because i used to work out there quite a bit um we'll take a look at it and it's it's a question of how much land do you want to give up and you know yeah. for the solar panels versus like a windmill i've seen some of those kinds of things but uh yeah we can we can take a look at that concept yep good idea it would be ground set solar panels as opposed to what we talked before about. We talked about on the south side we, of the roof. Angle. Yeah, on the roof. But then you got to change the structure of all the roofs and everything yeah. else. So we'll take a look at some different options. There's a whole field of solar panels on Route 231 in Lafayette. I mean, yeah. a field, oh, a yeah. huge field. And I don't know what it feeds into, but it's got to be interesting to take a look at it. Well, it's south of the Rolls Royce plant. Yeah. It's good when you got lots of hundreds of acres of old yes. farmland. Yes. You know, yes. and stuff like that. It's like the windmills. Yeah. Any citizen input? Any comments from the council? Motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, voice vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for attending. Hmm. We're moving on to our work study agenda. Yeah, well, we got the Washington Kelly. Washington Kelly. Hey. Well, you voted on Walsh and Kelly for the council, but not for redevelopment. Oh, should we do that? Yeah, please. Okay, we'll reopen <laughs> the meeting then. Just give us the same motion you did the last time to approve the extension of Walsh and Kelly prices from 2018 okay. into 2020. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, 2018 
prices for 2020 from Walsh and Kelly. Thank you. We may have some tiff roads to do that way. I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion? Yeah, no, Roll gonna, call. I'm going to clean up our chairs. Bob? Aye. Eric? Aye. Alan? Aye. Steve? Aye. Aye. Vote is 520 in favor. Okay, we're moving on to. Madam Chairman, did you? We have been streaming the work study sessions, or at least in general. Are you wanting to continue the stream? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The work study? I mean, we talked about not. Doing it, but that's okay. We'll go ahead. Well, I mean, you need to make, give us some direction. Yeah, I thought we talked about not. Um, yeah. Not about not streaming other boards right. and commissions. To, to then we have to staff those with two yeah. two additional people. But we're here. The public has the right to okay. hear hear what we're talking about at a work study. Okay, I just well, want, that's my opinion. Confirm that. Yes. All right. Thank you. You agree? Yes, ma'am. That's fine. Okay. All righty. What I handed out to you before the meeting, and some of you got it before, is, is not, it's, it's the revisions, the draft of chapter three of the code that Bill finished up. And Bill, do you want to make a couple comments or anything? Uh, if I told you I went through section three, I had to research each one of the sections because there have been, most of it was done in 1993. And so I wanted to make sure it was up to date. And that is a summary of the changes I suggest you make to uh, Code Section 3. You will know we're going to almost have to look at the existing code and compare it to the language that's there. But you will also note that we have deleted the whole section on public access to documents. And the reason I did that was because the statutes that were in effect in 1984 were changed in 1991 and were changed again uh, periodically in legislative sessions over the years. It consists of about 35 pages of definitions and other oh, rules concerning access to public records. So you'll see in there what I did was delete those sections <coughs> and have a paragraph that allows citizens to have access to inspect and copy records pursuant to those statutes, uh, as opposed to reciting the statutes, which is what's presently in your code from 1984. It, 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 uh, You're just incorporating by reference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then uh, another uh, portion of it you'll see is about fees. Rather than setting a fee for inspection or copying, uh, I reference the statute, which allows charging fees because that can change uh, at various times. So look at it and then we can take action on it. And if you have comments, please email them to me and I'll be glad to you know, work them into uh, any revisions. Was there any change because of the public access counselor or not? I'm sorry, what? That the public access counselor has always been there? Yes. In the same role? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, our ordinance and any ordinance we have is subject to the state statute. Right. You know, and even the existing ordinance on access to records mm -hmm. is overridden by the state statute. Thank now, you for putting the time into this. Well, there's some statutory references in the code that don't even exist. <laughs> <laughs> you do we want to address this at an upcoming meeting? The whole idea is read it, you'd be okay. ready for it. Okay. That's a, we don't right. want to talk about it tonight because we literally just got it. Okay. All right. The work study agenda is the safety village. You have a letter from the safety village that they're asking for their for an annual contribution. Um, $27,500. You got my backup material that we've not made that contribution in the past. We need some direction as to what you want to do. Well, I know that we contribute an awful lot of time be with our police and fire department that may be different. And I really think that, you know, the town of Cherville has much more resources than we will ever have. So I would probably have to, I, I personally feel like we should keep it the same that it is if we give anything at all, any donation, anybody have any other who are our representatives on the board? I know Bill Howell is one. 
Bill Howe's a Sherville representative. Oh, he's the Sherville. Yeah. He's Sherville's representative. D Dave, is Jim Bazan is. Jim Bazan? Brian Kissinger? Yeah, I from the police department. Uh, Debbie is, Debbie, you've been involved with it for forever. Yeah, I'm not on the executive board, though. Huh? I'm not on the executive okay. board. Okay. You're on the board. I'm on the board. Board. You have been since the start. Since the start of it. Yeah. Yes, I think the safety village. with me. <laughs> I think the safety village is a, it's a great thing. You know, my kids went to it, but they, to me, they seem off track. Off track. Um. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't support twenty five thousand. Well, I believe we're one third of the signatures on the contract. Is that yes, true? Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah, so we should. And listen, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've talked about how they're supposed to be on their own, but I'd say right now is a very important time for the safety village. If they need some uh, help with direction, we should help provide that. But the other communities, uh, Cherville, St. John's, are looking for our help too. We should, at this time, I believe, put in the requested amount. Uh, listen, it's safety for our kids. Whether you have kids or not, it's, it's going to be for our future. I think it's worthwhile. Uh, someone once told me, even if it saves one or two lives, it's well worth it. So I believe we should put in our one third amount because I know the other communities are putting theirs in. So I'm in favor of putting the 275. Mm -hmm. Only Cherville's putting in the amount. Steve, sure St. John and Dyer are not. Um, safety they villages. Have not. Right. Yeah. They um, have had a lot of meetings this year to get back on track. We just had a recent one. We had one in February that Tom and I went to, correct, Tom? Yes. And uh, there was a finance committee put together because of certain things happening. Um, to get back on track and uh, they have done a great job because it's people who represent Dyer, Sherville, and St. John. I did bring up to the committee and the boards that Sherville, St. John, and Dyer, we haven't gotten minutes in the town like we used to. They can send them electronically since Correct. 2016. The paper trail started. When they have meetings with the director or the board president, those meetings should include, if they're meeting with the presidents, it should be all three presidents of each town, and that hasn't been happening. But even though if that, it would never happen because we all put our hearts in every community sure. does, who lives there for the children. I've been there since there was no land, and we, Randy Minus and I went out and got the land and got a million dollar loan to go out there. We put our names on it, and Cheryl took over on it. But, there's got to be a say so from all three towns. Cherville, in the last few years, have been the main say so. Yes, if it did go belly up, they get 60%. We only get, I think we only get 15 or 20%, and so does St. John, because it's housed in Cherville. So I just think they're going on the right track. We got to let the finance committee finish their finance and get the budget all together so they could present it to you guys and to St. John and to Cherville. And once we had a budget, and even in the past, we asked for a budget each time. Where was the money going? Um, recently, the bingo has been stopped because we're not with Patrician anymore. They have to find a new one. But with the pandemic going on, it's going to be hard to get everything sure. back anyway. So it just we've just put it to a halt right now until it can be looked at. Um, there's a, another committee being put together for the bylaws to update those because bylaws were passed in 2011, but they were never recorded out at the county clerk's house or the clerk's office out in the county. So those redemptions, ad ad they're no good. We have to redo it. Right. So it's like, I don't know why it wasn't filed, but just small things, but it's nothing to, you know, the village will keep going strong. I think we just need to look at it. You guys need to get a budget of what has been going on there for 2019 to 2020. I think it's your right to have that budget. Right, right. And I think that's the bottom line is accountability. You know, certainly the mission is great. It's, it's perfect because so many kids have been saved, I'm sure, because of the safety village. But they have to be accountable for what they do as well. And, you know, Tom Schmidt and I have talked many a times about this, and, and he is in full agreement. You know, that's why we were all glad sure. the budget was put together. 
other good stuff, the budget groups. And you got some good people on there, you know, got different councilmen from each area. Yeah, I went to one meeting, it was the one in February, something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I personally, I'd like to see that plan before making a decision. I'd like to see what they're going to do differently to correct the finances before we, well, before we put more money into it. Uh, I mean, the safety village concept is a fantastic concept. Yes. I fully support it. You know, when I see $46,000 for a veterans museum, that's off the mark, in my opinion, of a safety village. Um, you know, we scrape, we're scraping to try to find funds for a veterans memorial at our parks. We sure. don't need to be building one in Cherville. I mean, I'd like to see the council, you know, do their initial what they've been doing, 10,000, until they get all these reports. So at least the safety village has that point. The last report, I think we had 126,000 um, that they reported, but I didn't get those financials. The, the minutes I gave, I brought back to the town and put in a safety village file in the office. But it's like I called to get those documents that were handed out that they ran out of, and I didn't get those. So they still need all of those. Because <laughs> we got to get back to documentation, or they should be emailing them to the town. So this way everybody could look at them. Now, does every other community donate their time like we do with our police and fire? I know Sherville does. I really can't speak for St. John. Okay. I, I know true. Dyer, we send a lot of help out there, police, fire, public yeah. work. Yep, right, right. I mean, and yeah, Jeff's here, but I understand that labor for the most part is supposedly rotated through. I know it was that way for the bingo. Each community took up one third of the, the load on okay. setting tables up on what day was it? Tuesday or Monday? Monday, yeah. So it's been done that way. If I may, could I ask for a couple items, which would be. Uh, present a copy of the budget and have someone here from the safety village to explain and answer our questions on it sure. and also I'd like a copy of the contract that the town of Dyer has signed with the safety village the original agreement I think it's, it's the second one yeah. Yeah. we had an original three, and then at three some point communities. It's not with the safety well with the three communities then yep I know they had a second version of it yeah that Thank was you. after the quad town Steve when the Highland backed out of it Okay, we'll have all the thank you. I'll ask Bill how to come. He's the chairman. Yes, of the board. he's perfect. Yes, yeah. yes, Probably he's very and knowledgeable. And Bill Jarvis yeah, together Jarvis since Jarvis is sure. the director. Sure. Yeah. I mean, any other Bill discussion? Come all the time before Bill Jarvis. So. Have we ever entertained an, uh, a per capita style of donation? I mean, we'll never meet, never match the tax revenue that Cheryl no, has no. with forty-one and with the resources thirty. Resources are yeah, right. So. I mean, to me, I think we would, we should look into, you know, entertain some sort of a per capita or right. per something that's right sized for each town's budget. Yeah. I think Sherville and St. John most of Yeah. I think Sherville and St. John take it out of their industrial areas, in which we don't have an industrial area like right. we do with that tax revenue coming in. But I mean, the new the clerk over in Sherville might have changed that. I don't know. I haven't discussed it with them. Huh? A tiff. They're taking another tip. We have a tiff. Okay. That's. I mean, there is no industrial area tax. It's going to come out of. Right. Your, I don't know if that's what they're taking out of or not. I can doubt it, but I that's doubt it too because it's not. Doesn't, <laughs> very much it, so. It doesn't fit into a tip but area. Still, they have a lot of industry that brings in a lot of dollars, whether it's in right. the tip or the general fund. Well, I know they got all those big dollars coming in. Well, yeah, we can't we can't just say it comes out of their industrial tax. There, okay. there isn't I such a thing. You know, I we'll find out where where they're actually taking it. Okay. Any other questions? Not on that, but I got a couple other items for the work study agenda. One is they spoke earlier today at the town council meeting. I would like to, the town of Dyer to look into an ordinance uh, restricting the types of guns or guns in our parts, especially during events. Uh, and I don't know about any other areas. Are they allowed in our meetings here? Are they allowed in town hall? I'm talking about the assault rifles and is there carrying them out there? I believe there is an ordinance that only allows sworn officers. Yes. Yeah. For the town, it is. But what about yeah. other uh, town property, such as parks and? I think it, well, it doesn't apply to the parks. Okay, no. so could but we? If you're looking at one, are you looking at no weapons, not just 
firearms, but knives and chemical weapons and other things like that across the board? Uh, I didn't think about the other ones. I would uh, ask to defer to the police chief and other groups that could provide some better insight on that. I was just looking uh, on the concerns of the residents that approached me on uh, Saturday uh, with their concerns about some people from out of town carrying uh, assault rifles. And Were they from out of state? Out of town. I don't know if well, they're out of state. state. If, they, if they're from they St. John or Munster, Here. they're not breaking the uh, law. If they're from Illinois, they'd be breaking no, no, the law. No, no, no. I agree. Because we not, have... That's not true at all. No. Citizens from Illinois can carry a long yeah. one. It's a long one. They can't carry a handgun. Right. I didn't think they could carry a long gun if you weren't a citizen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Agree. Yeah. Okay. And the issue is, should we allow them in our parks with the kids running around and the different events that we have? I surely well, I couldn't envision. Been, no. I don't think it's ever been an issue. They, no, they were just it's never been an issue. Well, it's an issue yeah. now. It's an issue. No. Residents no. have asked me to bring it up here, and they want to know if we have an ordinance. And when I inquired, I was told, no, we do not. All guns, uh, long rifles, assault rifles, doesn't matter if they got 150 clips with them, they're allowed to have it in. And I, they asked me about looking into an ordinance to not allow them in parts of other communities have similar ordinances. So then you're going to also, you're just looking at long guns or you're looking at handguns? I, my concern from the residents was just at the long guns because they were open and exposed. They have a handgun. I believe the, uh, you must be permitted and it must be concealed. Is that true, Chief? It doesn't have to be concealed, but it has to be permitted. Permitted. But, so the, but, but uh, the, if you're going to prohibit weapons, you prohibit weapons across the board. Yeah. Okay. And no, I'm not a. Can, you can prohibit people even with permits from carrying weapons in certain areas. The only issue that was brought up was the open assault rifle and long gun carrying. If it's what we want to look at to uh, ban all except for our police department, I'm not opposed to that. I, I would probably need more information to see on the reasons why we'd want to do it, but I, you know, we have concerns from citizens, the parents, the children in the park right now. Doesn't matter if it happens once, if it happens twice or five times, it's an issue. So we can address it or you can say, no, you don't. It was a two hour event and to my knowledge, was Chief, anybody threatened or did anybody have a weapon pointed at? I mean, sure. how the many point, weapons were there? If there I was, don't know. If there was a weapon pointed, they would have been arrested for assault. Two, three it, visible rifles that, that I, I saw during the Two? Event. Yes. Two. And nobody was threatening anybody or they had them slung over no. their shoulder? No reports of any kind of Okay. Or, no. The issue yeah. was parents were concerned in the park about why we allow them. And why well, we, we allow them because we have a Second Amendment in this country. Right. And if we know that. are afraid of it, that, that's, I but mean, we I have a sec Alan, We have a Second Amendment and I fully support it, but you're not allowed to carry guns or assault rifles in certain areas either because there's common sense restriction. So I, I'm going to push it. And it. You got the right to vote no against it, right. but there's right. some parents and children that have big concerns about people carrying assault weapons. Did you go to the community uh, market event? No, I did not. No, you did not. Uh, well, I know you've been to Dire Fest right. in the past. Can you, can you envision a bunch of people carrying assault rifle? If you think that's okay, then that's your right. Well, I'm just I, saying the concerns of the parents. It's, it's never, never happened. It's, it's never not happened. a bunch of people. It's no, never happened. Well, listen, we no. said it never happened, but it right. happened. Some people brought assault weapons in the park. I don't know for sure. I was told they were from out of town. Parents in the park came to me about their mm -hmm. concern and asked me to bring it up here. The kids were asking, so I'm bringing it up, and I would like. To so my wife walks through the uh, park in the morning with a dog. She can't carry her handgun with her. I did not say that. If you're listening to me, Alan. Well, I, I, I don't. I think you're way off course. It, it's not you an can. issue. We you don't can. have it. If it's never believe, been an issue. It's a. It was Nobody a two-hour event. So if it's not an issue, you would have no problem voting yes. on it. No. Oh, I'll, I'll vote on it. Yes, but this was an issue for the citizens here. They well, came for some citizens. Our dire town citizens came to me who were in the park, either walking or playing with their kids or walking their dogs. When they seen that, there was no, in, in my view, 
they didn't have no reason to be in a park with the weapons. All they had to do was walk on the street. It would have been a non-issue at that point. So when they're but, at Summerfest and there's gangbangers walking around with uh, possibly guns in their shorts, they're not afraid of that, though? Here, what does that have to do with uh, someone? Alan. Yeah, you're, you're talking about no, law-abiding citizens. Most of them are veterans. They were out there Alan. making a statement that they are standing up against a group that is against their uh, constitutional rights. That's why they were there. I don't know why they, were, they were there. I didn't That's why rights. they were there, because Ellen. the group you support, BLM, does Ellen. not like the you Second Amendment. You weren't there at the park, were you? No, I wouldn't. And you did not talk to them, did you? You weren't there to talk to them. I wouldn't so give those the time with day. We have, okay, let's yes, we have an issue on. about that. Is there so any we more could discussion look into on it. this issue? I, we okay. have an issue. I would ask that we look, if, if okay. no one else wants to talk to you. Do you have anything else on your list? But I'm going to ask them. Do you have anything else? You have three people that want us to draft something for consideration. I would like you to draft something for consideration. Uh, there's, I, I would have, there's no scenario where I would vote in favor of restricting any firearms anywhere. No. No. I'm against it. Against it. Okay. Okay, moving right along. Is there any other issues? Yes, issue? I got several more issues. Okay. Next issue. Pheasant Hills Pond. I know Tom said you're going to give a report on it. Yeah. I checked into it. The uh, report from the stormwater board is uh, a couple of decades old. No, uh, we, we had know. a discussion. Hey, hang on, let me finish. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. Thank I'm you. Sorry. As the report through the emails were sent, they were on a 1990-something study on the bacteria that eats away the muck. I talked to some experts and a couple of different uh, places. The technology has grown just like everywhere else. The medicine has changed, bacteria has changed. In order to use them being effective for the bacteria, the largest bucket with the largest, they call them hockey pucks, to be distributed through the pond and you put them in once a month would be about $700 to start that program. And that would be enough to get us through the end of summer. Normally you start in the beginning, but they said we could get a big jump on it and reduce <clears throat> a lot of the muck. Obviously the aeration needs to be done to provide air and air. The fountain was as everyone said, more aesthetic than anything else. So we'd have to look at that. The other issue I have is on the rail line property. I cannot get no response. Oh, you I mean know. the bike path you're talking about? Yeah, for the yeah. bike path. I don't know if you had any luck with the attorney from the railroad. I have nothing to report here at this time. You told me you would get back to by the end of this month. Okay. Yeah, Neil had a report on that the last meeting. I'm going to do a, another second communication to the CEO. He was cool. CEO of North No Fork Southern. He was promoted about two years ago. They had moved their center into Georgia now. They're no longer in Virginia. So I will reach out. But after that, there is the only option I see and was reported from the Service Transportation Board is to get estimates on it and process it through court. So that's where we're at if we can't. If we still want to utilize that line for a bike trail, we'd have to look on to get some estimates. Okay, is that the last thing? And yes. Okay, thank so you. So I will say that that is the citizens' number one uh, project that they'd like to see as far as amenities in this town. So I, I agree with Steve, we need to push and push and push and, and move forward on this one way or another with that bike trail. Uh, I have a question worth, I would just like, um, Bill, I'd like you to look into if you could. I uh, ran into, talk to one of the vendors at the community market Tuesday, who's a beekeeper selling honey and, and, and various products. Do we have an ordinance on beehives no. would, would be my question. Do and do we need nothing prohibits it? Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, then we will close this meet, <coughs> meeting and we have an executive here. session. I'm sorry. Tom, um, when I was talking with the taxes, is Dyer's commercial taxes and industrial doesn't meet up to the other towns? But I know you said the TIF district. How would the TIFs be able to help with that from Dyer and St. John? They really shouldn't. Because no. it's not the TIF or no. anything. Well, it's the it's, TIF isn't it's supposed not. to be used for operations or maintenance. Yep. Other than yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to clarify. I yeah. Know that, I, I want to make sure everybody yeah. else knew that. I don't think they're paying from the TIF. I'll have to find out what fund they're taking. Okay. Ours comes from the seated fund. Right. Is any question? And what I meant is, 
they have industrial tax is a huge thing. I, it's their base. It's taxes based by yeah. house right. taxes, commercial taxes. Right. And it's just a lot more than what we have. Okay, thank you for attending. And we will move into our executive session. We'll stay here for executive. That's fine. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you.